Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. Um, excuse me if I sound terrible. Because <laughs> I still feel terrible. But I feel like if I don't do something, I'm going to fall off the face of the earth. So, I've got this frame that I got at a yard sale, thrift shop, somewhere. Ages ago. Um, 2001. Sometime since then. And I'm going to do a, um, some sort of an altered shrine, or a shrine. So, um, stick with me. I'm going to take this apart, and I'll be back. Alright, so, I've taken it apart. I've got the frame, the glass, which I'm not going to use, so... You could use this for baking your polymer clay on. It's really thick piece of glass not a cheap piece of normal picture frame glass <laughs> the back which I'm also not going to use and the tabs that hold the thing together I'm not going to use these either so I would put these in a little ziploc bag and save them you never know when you're going to need them alright okay I've cleaned it up. I've done a little bit of sanding on the surface just to knock some of the rough off of it. And then I've got this Deco Art Media modeling paste in the black. And a stencil brush. Any stiff um, brush will do. Alright, and all I'm going to do is pounce a couple of layers of this all around the frame. And being sure to get in the grooves with a good couple of layers. Alright. Okay, I've got two coats of the... Uh, black modeling paste or whatever it's called <laughs> if you don't have black modeling paste you can just use um, a white gesso would work and when you pounce it on it will still give you that texture and then you could just paint over it with black acrylic paint now I'm gonna do some Inca gold rub on this and also if you don't have Inca gold you can use um, mm -hmm. you can use acrylic paint just dab some out on your mat or whatever you're working on and just use your finger and just rub it on I did that for years before I got the ink of gold now if you don't know this is actually deco art metallic luster which is an awesome product I absolutely love it it seems to be a little creamier than the Inca gold I'm just starting out with this turquoise color I haven't even decided what I'm gonna make <laughs> what I'm doing here so this is gonna be a Learn as you go. Kind of thing. And I'm not too worried about getting it even or anything. I'm going to use several colors. Alright, I'm also going to use the Elegant Emerald. Possibly some of the silver spark and my absolute favorite the iced espresso. I use this one a lot <laughs> I said I was gonna use Inca gold and then I used the metallic luster go figure I Just ordered these because uh, They seem to be a lot easier for me to find they you, you can get these on uh, Joann's I believe you can get the ink of gold too. I 
Joann's. This green, however, is quite a bit thin or runny almost. So I got it a little heavy on that part. I get asked quite often about the Inca Gold and if I have trouble with it molding and it's a problem that I don't have. It may just be nothing more than where I live. I am living in the world of wacky weather right now. It has been in the 70s and the 80s. Not good when you're not feeling good. I've actually run the air conditioner the last couple of days. Even last night, it only dropped down to around the lower 60s. I'm kind of happy with that. Alright, now after it dries for just a couple of minutes, I just used a soft um, cloth and buffed it up a little bit. Now, I don't really care for where it's gone in the in the groove. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that if I can. Never be afraid to go back and fix something. If you mess it up more, <laughs> you can still go back and fix it. It's all part of the game. I would say there are no mistakes. It's all in how you work with them. because I made the texture stand up quite a bit. That's why the metallic luster stuck in some of the places I didn't want it. Alright. I'm even going to go back and Just add a little bit of black and some of that gold area. Some of that gold area that's green. Huh. Alright, I'm going to continue to do this until I get it all fixed. Alright, now I took the, whatever you call this, insert and I traced it on a cereal box. <laughs> And I'm going to use this and a couple of one inch strips that I marked off, okay, inch and a half strips, <laughs> that I marked off a half an inch on one side. I'm just going to clip along this side at about half inch intervals. Alright, 
so that I can fold this around the, the oval. And I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. I should have said to score along the line first just to make it easier to to bend those up all right and then do the cut at a half an inch all along the edge all right now you can see that when we bend these we'll have a half we'll have an inch <laughs> ah. to stand up around the uh, around the oval we may trim it later that's just a standard that I that I use all right so and also the half inch they don't have to be exact don't go measuring them <laughs> you'll drive yourself crazy all right so now we're just gonna bend these So, all right, and then you're going to glue them around the circle, around the oval, so that they form little tabs on the back. I would suggest, like, maybe your glue gun, just because it sets quickly. You can run a line of like a glossy accents or tacky glue or along the edge and then run your hot glue a little closer in. That way it'll give you two different kinds of stick. An instant stick and then a longer hold stick. Alright, so I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. Alright, so I should have mentioned this sooner <laughs> if my head was a little clearer things would roll around a little better but I'm just taking some white modeling paste you can do this with gesso also you just have to make it thick I'm just pouncing some on really good and thick Loop it back. Alright, so after this dries and I paint it, it's going to look like waves. Alright, I'm going to do that, let this dry. It can be painted later, but putting the texture on um, before you put the edging on is um, kind of important. So, all right, then I'm going to glue the edge on. So, I shall return. All right, now one of the reasons why I didn't measure these strips, as in the length, is because I knew they were going to be not long enough to go all the way around and too long to be just half so hold this one give it an initial little curve and then I'm just going to guesstimate. It's alright if it hangs over a little bit. It's actually what you want. There's a little area to glue. And I'm going to cut it. About right there. Alright, now. Don't glue. Where they overlap each other. Until you fitted it into the frame. Then you can squirt a little glue in there all right so we've got our little shadow box then we're gonna we're gonna paint around the inside black 
you can do this beforehand or afterwards and then we're going to paint the background all right i apologize that i didn't film painting the background all it is is two colors of paint this is a turquoise acrylic paint and i think it's called like something or other beach <laughs> i don't have a clue uh and then white and all i did was paint the whole thing with the turquoise and then i pounced on some white and then i went back with a dry brush and just brushed it down and then i pounced on another layer of white this is just a washer that I glued on. I may add a few more um, found type objects before I'm done. But the next thing I wanted to talk about is what I want to add. And I'm going to add a couple of these turtles that I've made. And they're not, they're not complete yet. All I did was put a little black gesso on them so far. And so they're going to stand proud of the bottom a bit. And then this little one's going to go on the frame. Alright, so I'll have to come back in another video and show how I did the turtles. Although I have uh, several other videos with turtles. Um, even a tutorial on some turtle necklaces. These were done just a bit differently. You could, by all means, just follow the first tutorial. It would work just fine. Alright, so I'm going to add a little bit of the... Um, uh-huh. I apologize. The metallic luster. And I'm going to start with the green again. We want these to look like sea turtles. And because this one is such a soft um, mm -hmm, jar of color, that's why I'm dabbing it in the lid. Alright, so I'm going to continue on with the green. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that on video. And I did put rhinestone eyes in these turtles. And it's, it's okay that to paint over them. You can go back with your X-Acto afterwards and clean them right up. Alright, here they are. I've gone ahead and put all three colors on. And um, gave them a quick buff after they've dried. Just for a few seconds is all it takes. Then I've got a piece of um, the cereal box. And I've folded it to where it would make a rectangle. Alright. I've painted on the sides, on both sides, and on the tab on the inside. So, this is going to glue like, like this. So, you'll be able to see the black if you don't paint it. The reason I didn't paint the tabs on the bottom side is because that's where it's going to glue down. And the same thing with the top. That's where it's going to glue down. So it'll be something like this. If you tried to if you tried to do it where it stood more like this, it would have a tendency to lean one way or the other if it got pushed on the least little bit. So that's why I splay the edges out just a bit to keep that from happening. So I'm gonna get this glued in the frame. 
and then I'll come back and show it to you. Alright, here it is glued in. I just used some glossy accents. Again, I, I'm using that because I'm out of E6000. So, I'm going to attempt... That is the way he will set. And then the baby goes something like this. Ah, oh, won't that be pretty? And then I'll probably do maybe a little bit of splatter on it. Um, some white or something. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to get these glued down. And then I'll come back and show it finished. I just wanted to share before I glued these down that the reason I didn't paint all, all of the back was so it would get good contact with where I glued it down. Alright. And another thing, when you're gluing something... Um, like a 3D type of element. Don't cover your whole surface with glue. Like I did a square there with a dot in the middle. That way when you press the object down, the glue has room to spread out. And if it still has a little air, it will almost form a vacuum and be more difficult to pull back off. I hope that makes sense. Uh -huh. Alright. I want you to be able to see his head well, but... Alright. Okay, here it is, completely finished. I did splatter, just a light splatter of white paint on the uh, turtles. I've tried to share with you how to make a, a shrine or a shadow box using just the simplest um, supplies a, a metal frame a cereal box some modeling paste and some acrylic paint of some sort whether it be a wax um, rub-on or just a regular metallic acrylic paint it doesn't have to necessarily be metallic if you just rub on some metallic colors uh, some acrylic colors you'll get a totally different look uh, at this point you could add some uh, little tabs of paper down here or cardboard down here with some jump rings to hang something from the bottom there's still a lot of different things you can do every time I think about doing something I look at it again and I just like the simplicity of it so that's about it for this one uh, thank you all for joining me and I shall holler at y'all later bye now